Welcome to the Return to School Safety Plan and Guidelines for our families within the Agua Fria Union High School District. We are super excited for March 22nd to be here and to get our students back on campus and to have uh, them in our classrooms and being involved in some activities. Our staff is already on campus and they're preparing their classrooms uh, over the next week uh, in anticipation of everybody coming back. Uh, this presentation is meant to outline our mitigation plans and student expectations. You will find it, it is uh, generally uh, the same as we had in October. Many of our mitigation plans are the same. Uh, we have updated those and we have made sure that we have aligned these with the CDC uh, toolkit that they recently uh, released on February 12th. The number one step that we can take in creating a safe environment for our campuses is making sure that you keep your child home when they're not feeling well. If you're not sure if uh, the symptoms that they're experiencing are related to COVID or they might be in isolation of just a, an upset stomach or allergies, the best thing to do is just keep them home until they have an improvement of symptoms and then uh, reach out to your healthcare provider or our nursing staff to get some guidance. It is also equally important that if your child has been exposed to COVID-19 as a close contact, that they do not report to school, even if they're asymptomatic. And as a reminder, close contact is being within six feet of anyone uh, for a total of 15 minutes within a 24 hour period. Uh, close contacts do require a quarantine period before they are able to return to school. If you find yourself in, in this situation, please contact the school, make sure that they are aware that your child has been in close contact, and then they will direct you as to when your child can return. If you're still unsure and you aren't able to communicate with your healthcare provider, please use the link below. This is a document produced by the CDC to help you in your decision making. We're gonna walk through what a school day is gonna look like for our students when we return. We're gonna talk about uh, from the very beginning of transportation through the end of the day. Uh, the first piece is our daily health screening form. We had students complete this in the fall when we were in school and we're going to continue to do this. Uh, this has been updated uh, to provide more efficiency, more precise language for our students and for our staff as well. Uh, we do ask that this get uh, completed every single day by all of our students. Uh, we want to make sure that this is completed prior to students loading the bus uh, and or arriving on campus. As students uh, this time will have a link sent to their email every single morning. They can just simply go into that link and com complete the health uh, screen form. Uh, students will also be provided a QR link at the various sites if they didn't get into their email so they can complete the, the, um, the health screening form. And we do check this for com completion. So if we have students who did not complete the form, they will be pulled out of class and asked to do this. So if you can, please speak with your child and make sure that they are completing this health screen form uh, prior to them even coming on campus. Bus transportation, uh, not listed on uh, all of these bullets is a very important information regarding bus transfer transportation. Uh, if you are, uh, one of those families who uh, need bus transportation when we start school March 22nd, please note that you are required to register with our transportation uh, department so we can make sure that we have enough routes, the routes are precise, we're not just showing up to empty bus stops, and then that will allow our transportation department to know how many buses they need to get out, how full the buses will be, etc. Uh, you will be getting additional information from your school newsletters uh, each week regarding how you will register uh, through the EduLog app, but this is required if you intend for your child to take the bus. Um, again, we ask that the child is completing the health screening form prior to loading the bus. And as usual, we'll have a structure as far as loading the bus from back to front and uh, as we arrive at school, they'll release from front to back. Uh, social distancing will be enforced based on the number of students. 
So if we have more than 26 students on a bus, it will not be feasible to keep them six feet apart. However, we are uh, requiring that masks are be, being worn the entire bus ride. As well, we, as well uh, we will be increasing the ventilation by having the hatch open and some windows at least two weeks to make sure that we get plenty of air exchange while the students are on the bus. Any student who refuses to wear a mask uh, will not be able to load the bus. Uh, the bus transportation department will communicate with schools so we can communicate with families that your child was not able to, to come on the bus because of their refusal to wear a mask. Please make sure that your child has a mask ready to go when they're uh, headed to the bus. Uh, and additionally, we are disinfecting the bus in between runs uh, to make sure that late start schools have a disinfected uh, bus when they arrive to be picked up. All right, so what happens when your child's gonna arrive at school? Uh, each school has a number of entrances for the students to arrive, up, arrive through and not just one entrance. So we're avoiding a uh, compacted entrance area. Students who want to uh, pick up breakfast, they're still going to be able to do that with a grab and go. We ask that uh, students do follow the, the school's direction and the teacher's instruction on where to eat their breakfast as that will differ from site to site. Uh, we do ask that students report directly to their classrooms. Uh, we know that uh, you know, during the morning time and at lunch time, uh, this is a, 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 an opportunity for our students to be able to socialize, talk with their friends and hang out. But unfortunately, in order for us to uh, minimize any close contacts and any exposures, we're asking students to report directly to their classrooms throughout the day. And again, we're gonna ask students if they haven't done so to complete that health screener form. Once inside the classrooms, uh, the desks will face the same direction. Uh, sites have been given some direction on some level of uh, collaborative uh, structures and how to do that in a safe way. Uh, when feasible, desks will be placed six feet apart. So if we have classrooms that end up with more than about 17 or 18 students when we return, the desks will not be able to be six feet apart, but we will minimize that as best as possible. So an, an example would be if 22, 23 students are in the classroom on a given day, instead of being six feet apart, those desks will now be five feet apart. And again, students are asked to be to wear uh, their masks the entire time while the teachers are also implementing a mask break um, throughout the day. Every classroom is equipped with a number of cleaning supplies. Uh, there is a end of the class period cleaning procedures as well as when students come into the classroom to wipe down the desks. We also have hand, san uh, hand sanitizer available in all of the classrooms either located inside or just as you walk into the classroom. Teachers are also um, given a procedure on how to make sure that when uh, supplies are low that they can get those uh, filled up quickly and then they're not going without any cleaning supplies. Passing periods, again, we want masks on the entire time. Uh, we want students to follow the traffic flow at each site. It will vary uh, based on the makeup of the campus but schools do have a certain traffic flow for students. We ask that they continue to follow those. And again, that they're gonna report directly to their next class. Lunches, uh, this will be the, the, the most difficult part as far as uh, ensuring social distancing. Each school will have at least two lunches, so that will uh, decrease the number of students out at a lunch. Each site will have several stations where students can pick up their lunch and they won't have to congregate in one space and wait in uh, extremely long lines. Uh, we still expect social distancing as much as possible during lunch, but as I said earlier, lunch is a time where the students are able to, to socialize with their friends and hang out, and this is a, a piece that you know they've been missing for a long time. But we still want them to uh, have that physical distance as much as they can and make sure that they are following the seating guidelines at each site um, based on the campus makeup. Um, we do ask that our students are wearing their masks when they're not eating. Um, that way we can minimize any potential exposure. 
and to continue with our stay healthy uh, standard procedures and making sure that their hands are sanitized and clean prior to entering any eating space. At the end of the day, students will be released uh, in different ways at different sites. Um, they'll have a unique way of releasing students, uh, just again, based on the, the campus makeup. Uh, we ask at the end of the day that we continue with that social distancing while students may be waiting for a ride or waiting for a bus and that they are leaving campus immediately. If they do have an activity or an athletic event, they will be asked to uh, head to that event right after school. The restrooms, each site will have a specific bathroom uh, procedure to ensure the safety and sanitization of the facilities. Restrooms are cleaned every hour. Uh, we are afforded the opportunity to uh, hire additional custodial staff to support this. And they will also be monitored to ensure that uh, minimal students are occupying the space at one time. And this usually happens you know, at lunchtime or during passing periods. A couple of other considerations uh, as our students return on March 22nd is making sure that your child is bringing their own water or water bottle each day. Our uh, fountains, our push button fountains are closed and, and not able to be used. However, we do have water uh, bottle fill stations at each of our campus. So at minimum, they need to bring their own water bottle to be able to fill that throughout the day. And we continue to stress our stay healthy procedures, making sure that they are washing their hands throughout the day. Another big item is making sure they aren't sharing items for example, their, their Chromebooks, art supplies, uh, pens, pencils, you know, those types of things. We want our students to avoid sharing those, even food, uh, snack items. Uh, we're asking that those, those do not be shared between students. Uh, our students are gonna be pretty excited when they come back. They might not have been able to see uh, some of their friends other than through a virtual world. And uh, they're gonna wanna give, um, high fives and hugs and all those good things. And we're asking them to avoid those as, as much as possible to reduce exposure. So what happens if there's an exposure or someone isn't feeling well? Uh, we did have some updates uh, to, to these as far as the number of days that somebody might be uh, sent home or quarantined to align with new CDC and state guidelines. Um, but as we did before, uh, please know that if uh, someone, if there is an exposure or a staff or student isn't feeling well, that individual will be removed to an isolation area immediately. And our health staff will determine uh, the next steps. They'll determine if that uh, student or staff member needs to go home or if this is an isolated symptom and then they can remain at school. Our classrooms will be sanitized. Uh, that cannot happen until 24 hours hours after um, there has been an exposure and students will be moved immediately from that classroom to a classroom, an empty classroom. So students might go a couple of days without uh, being in their uh, regular classroom due to cleaning uh, protocols. Notification letters, uh, you will, families will get notification letters. It will all depend on if there may have been a potential exposure, if there was a close contact, um, I think you guys are all very familiar with these. You've got plenty of them in the fall. Uh, we don't expect those to stop, uh, maybe de decrease from what the fall brought, but you um, have all been uh, provided uh, notification letters and are very familiar with those, what those look like. Examples of our flow charts are over on the right here of what, you know, what would happen if a student uh, is feeling ill and if there's an employee on campus. So you can see the procedures that we follow to ensure a safe campus for everybody. Reporting requirements, just as a reminder um, to let us know if your child tests positive for COVID. We are required to uh, submit this information to the Maricopa County uh, Public Health Office. And we are also required to uh, report all close contact exposures to the county health department. So it's important that you are communicating with us in a positive COVID case so we can communicate with other individuals who may have had an exposure. Um, updated CDC guidance also uh, indicates that any close contact exposure should be tested regardless if you're asymptomatic. 
So we will ask that if your child was in close contact that they do, uh, they do get tested. Potential consequences, we, we are excited, like I've said a few times, that our students are coming back and we wanna maintain a safe and healthy campus. And we, the way we're gonna do this is to make sure that all of our staff, all of our students, all of our guests are following our mitigation plans and our safety guidelines. So we wanna make sure that, you know, if individuals are choosing not to follow the Unfortunately, we, we, we may have to have some level of discipline with those individuals, conversations with families, and you know, ultimately, if there continues to be a level of defiance, that that student may not be able to return to our campus if uh, safety guidelines are not being followed. This is a new, new type of culture, a school culture that we need to create. Uh, masks are part of that. We need to keep those masks on. Uh, keeping social distance as best as we can. We need to continue to try and do these, these small steps to keep our campus open for the rest of the year and into August. All right, and then just a note, uh, as we've gone through this journey together, uh, guidelines are always changing and our protocols will change in alignment with new CDC guidelines or state guidance. Uh, based on their recommendations and, and benchmark metrics. Uh, the link below is just to give you, send you to a site so you can, you yourself can look at benchmarks if you choose to do so. With that, I thank you uh, for your time and uh, listening to this presentation. If you have any specific questions, each uh, site has a, a, a COVID supervisor who will be able to support you with this.